It's actually not a bad thing. It's kind of a dream anyway, so... Uh, and I, I did try and clean up. I'm sorry, I, um... Uh, I'm Iranian, so I shaved two hours ago, but this... Thank you. I thought you'd like... Diverse group, you enjoy the racial humor. Um, I am... <laughs> I am doing a, a cultural... I've been asked to do a cultural love letter to Toronto in the spirit of the QSAs that I do. So, uh, and... We've not even rehearsed it, <laughs> but my old friend Andrew Craig is at the grand piano there and he's going to provide uh, the musical accompaniment. I have no idea what he's going to do. We're jamming uh, in front of all these people. So Andrew, take it away and don't distract me, please. <laughs> well, hi there. Happy Tuesday. And happy Pan Am slash Parapan Am Day! Yes, yes. That's what this day, July 10th, in this incredible city of ours, Toronto, has been dubbed. And as you may know, strictly speaking, today marks exactly three years until Toronto's Pan Am Games open in the summer of 2015. But really, today is dedicated to the efforts of the athletes, the organizers, community groups, artists and citizens who will make Toronto's Pan Am Games a reflection of the very best of this city. When we eventually look back on the success of the Toronto Games, it will be thanks to the people of the city, and of course to the verb of its visitors. And sure, those are pretty clear ingredients for success, but it's also just how this city's been operating lately, and I'm not talking about City Hall, but on the streets in its vivid patchwork of neighborhoods, people by citizens of the world, the collusion and collision of cultures that makes this place a blueprint for a future city that will be replicated around the globe. Nowhere is as culturally diverse as Toronto. Nowhere. And nobody does it better. Look, Toronto is no longer just a world-class city as we tried so hard for it to be for so long. It's actually something much more, much more beautiful. It's a global city with increasing self-confidence and a nearly mystical harmony. You see, in Toronto, for the most part, regardless of what sensationalistic headlines may sometimes say, the caring citizens here have elevated harmonious living to a fine art. It's done in many ways, raising the bar, but the pride and the responsibility comes from who the people of this city really are. And artistically, things have grown to a level close to burgeoning. This city is exploding with culture and has become one of the creative epicenters of the world. Don't take my word for it. Take a good look at what comes out of Toronto. From one of the most influential film festivals in the world, say, in TIFF, to the Inside Out Festival, to the groundbreaking Hot Docs Festival. Filmmakers know audiences here are fertile ground. Our institutions are on par with the world's great arts hubs. From the Four Seasons Center, home to the Canadian Opera Company and the National Ballet, to the AGO and the ROM, Artscapes projects for creativity and community, Harborfront Center, the Power Plant, the pristine and magically organic acoustics of Massey Hall, Roy Thompson Hall, and the beautiful new Kerner Hall at the Conservatory. And the celebratory festivals, there's nearly one a week all year long, from Luminato to Louis Blanche, the amazing Pride LGBTQ Fest that drew hundreds of thousands to the streets a couple of weekends ago, to the imminent Caribbean Carnival that is always an international destination, don't you know? There's more groundbreaking theater than you could ever see, from Fringe to Factory, Soul Paper to Tarragon, Can Stage to Summer Wars, from Buddies to Shakespeare and Hyde Park. The new companies putting stakes down here, too. Toronto is also a city of letters. It's here that we celebrate the Gillers, the Griffin, the Charles Taylor, and the other big prizes. We have the houses from McClellan and Stewart to Anansi holding open the literary door, from Coach House to Insomniac, and many, many more. From the open mic poetry to word on the street to the International Festival of Authors, the act of writing is something to be witnessed here. Our music scene has continued to limitless potential, from the heady days of indie rock breakthroughs to Drake's world-beating crew, Feist's artistry, and Melanie Gilder's grammy side voice carrying a tune. The TSO is in good hands, and North by Northeast attracts all those bands. The small world brings music from all over, so you can check it out here at home. And there's jazz, TV jazz, beaches jazz, and just the night the Rex, where you may roam. And of course, this is all in addition to the direct focus of the Pan Am Games. The athletes, the heart of the Canadian collective of sport leaders that finds much of its heartbeat 
here in Toronto. From this city's amazing infrastructure of local and amateur facilities to the professional sports teams that carry the hopes of this town through every season, for every sports fan, for every athletic dreamer, for every Pan Am medalist, there is a reason. To kick off this event in artistic style, we're not just socially suited to host the Pan Am Games in Toronto, we're culturally primed. Which is why it's exciting to be here in David Pico Square tonight for the unveiling of Play Me On Yours. A month-long installation of 41 different pianos in public spaces throughout the city. A public art project created by Luke Jarrah that first seen in Birmingham, England. It is genius. Perfect for this place. Here in Toronto, each of the pink pianos has been artistically augmented to reflect the aesthetic and the heritage of each, heritage of each participating band on country. From Argentina to Trinidad and Tobago, from Chile to Canada, Venezuela to Mexico, the USA to Paraguay, Jamaica to Brazil, and 31 more. The decorative work has been undertaken by local artists with connections to each nation. All the pianos are unique, all lovingly restored, all saying, play me, I'm yours all waiting for you to happen upon them. To reach out and tickle the ivories, to create a musical moment out of a flash of inspiration and a little bit of courage, to create on the spot in a place where the air is rich with expression and contemplation and laughter and emotion, to reflect perhaps on the convergence of many nations in this city every day creating the positive commotion. And to begin the countdown to 2015, which is, after all, not so far away. There's three years upon us and lots to do. Let's get to it. I'm Gian Gomeshi, and I'm a proud Torontonian too. Thank you very much. You're very kind. Well, and by the way, I would, of the three, I'd rather, I'd most want to be Robin Gibb, if it was. As I was saying those words about Toronto, I was thinking about which BG I would. Um, I, I do have a request before I do the introduction here. Um, what we're about to do is the heart of this project you're about to witness right now that involves um, some of our youngest and most talented citizens sitting at pianos. And what I'm going to ask you to do is if you are standing on the concrete, just step a few, ba a few steps back. Uh, to where the grass is, just for a few minutes. We want you to come back, just so that you can actually...